2005, Intamin failed to hit the 500 foot mark on their newest coaster. Kidding the Cot, a 456 foot roller coaster, opened at Six Flags Great Adventure as the world's tallest coaster. But not only did they miss the 500 foot mark, in the next 15 years, every attempt at breaking that record failed. And no roller coaster manufacturer has even come close to building a coaster over the 500 foot barrier. Not even Intamin. Why not? The 500 foot mark was only 44 feet away. Will we ever see a 500 foot coaster? Join me as I explore the reasons why a 500 foot coaster has yet to be built, which manufacturer could break the barrier, and why I think we will see at least one open by 2030 in the US. For starters, we need to look at the reason a 500 foot coaster hasn't been built yet. A 500 foot coaster has pros and cons. Its pros obviously being that it would be the tallest coaster in the world and would draw a ton of attention and hype. It could also possibly be one of the best roller coasters in the world. Its cons though are price and maintenance. A 500 foot coaster is very expensive to build and extremely difficult to maintain. In the 1990s and 2000s, Six Flags and Cedar Fair were at war with each other. Who can build the tallest, fastest and longest coaster? Every time one broke the record, the competition broke the record again. This just kept going on. Millennium Force is known as the first to go coaster, but it came three years after Six Flags Magic Mountain Superman Tower of Terror, which is more like a drop tower than a launch coaster, but it does go over 400 feet. In 2003, Cedar Fair raced to regain the record for the world's tallest roller coaster at their flagship park, Cedar Point. They did get the record back when Top Thrill Dragster opened standing at 420 feet tall, being the tallest and fastest roller coaster ever built, being Superman by 5 feet. Six Flags wasn't ready to give up yet, and they installed a near clone on Top Thrill Dragster at one of their biggest parks, Six Flags Great Adventure. King the Cow opened in 2005, standing at 456 feet and reaching speeds of 128 miles per hour. The speed record was retaken by another park a few years later, but the height record remains with Six Flags Great Adventure until today. Not only did Cedar Fair never try to reclaim that record, they built Maverick Next, which was their way of ending the coaster wars for tallest and fastest, and then building a smaller quality coaster that was still a super fun ride. It's understandable why the coaster wars for the tallest and fastest roller coaster ended in the mid 2000s. As the roller coasters got bigger, they became more expensive and harder to maintain. There was no reason for any park to spend an absurd amount of money building a roller coaster taller than King the Car if it was just going to be the exact same ride, just taller. When King the Car opened, there was only one company able to break the 500 foot barrier, but no one wanted to blow their bank accounts calling Intamin to build a larger King the Car. It took a while for other manufacturers to catch up, but B&M now has their Giga Coaster model, which might be able to go up to 500 feet, and RMC has their T-Rex model, which we know can go up to 500 foot. Intamin is also obviously able to go up to 500 feet, and some other manufacturers may be able to as well. Today, a park can get a giant coaster that breaks the height record for the world's Taurus coaster, but is actually a roller coaster and is more than King of the Cast 10 second ride experience. Even though a 500 foot roller coaster may be able to be a lot different and better than in 2005, it would still be an extremely expensive coaster and would be very difficult and expensive to maintain. On top of that, it will be an extreme roller coaster and might not have as much of an appeal to the general public as a 350 foot B&M gig or wood. Parks are willing to spend money on new attractions if they think it's worth it. Universal opened Hagrid's in 2019, which is rumored to have cost $300 million. That's the most expensive coaster ever built. If Universal wanted, they could have built an extreme boundary for a coaster and still themed it pretty well for half that price. But they wanted a family coaster. Most parks are geared towards family, which is why I honestly think the only place a 500 foot coaster could open in the US is Six Flags or Cedar Fair. But once the first 500 foot coaster opens, I think other chains or other or but once the first 500 foot coaster opens, I think other chains or parks could build giant unique rides later down the line. A 500 foot coaster also takes up a ton of land, so any park that's running out of space is kind of off the table. From the three major roller coaster manufacturers, B&M, Intamin, and RMC, I think RMC is the most likely to build a 500 foot coaster. My reasoning is simple. 
A 500 foot RMC will cost a lot less than any similar coaster simply because RMC uses a single rail track which is which uses less steel for the track as well as fewer supports, thereby lowering costs. The only problem with RMC opening a 500 foot coaster is the fact that they haven't even come close to the 300 foot mark yet. B&M could probably go up to 500 feet and if they did, it would become the world's tallest, fastest, longest and best ride. Just imagine a larger Fury 325. But Fury cost Cedar Fair $30 million, so a larger Fury that went to 500 feet would probably cost closer to $50 million. I could see a park building something like this one day, but I'm not sure what happened, especially if RMC can build a coaster the same height for closer to $30 million. Intamin is usually the one to break the records and push the barrier, but I'm not sure this time. Will Dragster saying the record wasn't worth the maintenance nightmares that came along with it. I think we will see the first T-Rex open for 2025 going 300 feet. I think by 2030, Six Flags will have built at least one Giga T-Rex and will be preparing to open a 500 foot T-Rex at one of their parks. The first park that comes to mind is Great Adventure since they have a ton of empty usable land they could build a coaster on and have no height limit. They are also currently home to the world's tallest coaster, so breaking the record there would make sense. The park is one of the most popular amusement parks in the country and I think the chain will start showing it some more love. Magic Mountain obviously comes to mind as well when thinking of Six Flags and I think they'd get the 300 foot T-Rex since I don't know if they'd have room for a 500 foot one and even if they did I just feel like it would do better at Great Adventure. But Magic Mountain is still a possibility. Great America is the only other major Six Flags park but they have a height limit so they're lucky if they can't even build a digger. Then there's Cedar Fair. Obviously Cedar Point will be an option, but I'm not sure how they would fit such a massive coaster there. Carowinds, California's Great America, Kings Island, and Kings Dominion all also have a shot in my opinion. I think there's a solid chance we see a 500 foot RMC T-Rex built by 2030 since it's the cheapest possible way to build a coaster that high currently. I honestly doubt we'll see a B&M that high by 2030, though I think they'll hit the 400 foot mark by then. Intamin is kinda a wild card and if a park is willing to take a risk on them and blow the bank, I could see them build a full 500 foot coaster with a lift hill, but I wouldn't give it a high likelihood of happening. Unless Intamin's biggest customer, Universal, decides to build a 500 foot coaster because why not, it would probably cost only a sixth of what they spent on a family launch coaster.